Welcome to Freelance Sucks. Here we discuss the dark side of freelancing about which nobody usually talks out loud. And in this show, we speak with experienced freelancers. And I'm sure listening to their stories helps you prepare for freelancers' challenges. My name is Yuri. I'm a community builder at Cold Control and Nanium.works. And my guest is Bjorn Brand, an experienced freelance digital marketing consultant who also helps freelancers to receive suitable project proposals through improving their digital presence. So welcome, Bjorn. Hi, guys. Happy to be here. And let's start from the hardest question. As a freelancer, what is the most challenging part for you? Well, actually, (laughs) managing my time and not working too hard uh, and too much (laughs) <laughs> for, for actually, um, yeah, keeping keeping your hourly rate high this way, you know, is um, yeah, I think that's, that's one of the biggest challenge. How do you deal with it? How do you make sure that you are working just exactly right amount of time and getting paid exactly what you want to be paid? Mm, I think uh, I mean right now that's that's the point you know where I'm struggling, but. Um, um, it, I think the, the thing that you have to do here is uh, create processes that you can kind of streamline and this, this will get you to uh, achieve this goal in the long term. So you have you have uh, experience on handling different things. I mean, for, for consulting, it's always a little bit different and people always need, uh, they have different needs and things you need to have out. But... I think that's it's about defining okay what's my services and streamlining them as processes so make sure okay i have so many hours that i spend on this process then this and this and this is kind of like my service package and this this could be a way to approach this how do you calculate your hourly rate mm, I th- there's um from from market experience so i know what other consultants are um getting paid of course that's the first thing i looked at and then basically uh <laughs> just trying out you know trying to um, approach different clients with different um, um hourly rates always trying to to hire to put it higher a little bit and then um yeah basically that's that's what how, how i approached it so so i think that's also how a lot of freelancers do it uh, I've read in studies that I look at other people's hourly rates. I heard this tip that when you're not sure about your hourly rate and you want to make it uh, higher, you have to like after. Okay, let's 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 say like your hourly rate like 100 euros per per hour, and after closing successfully a client, you can already go for 120 for the second one. And if you get the second one for 120, you can go with 140 with the third one. And then like this person saying, okay, it's too much. And if you like try a few more projects and it's still too much, you you might think like, okay, so maybe I will do with 130. Let's go with 130. (laughs) So I I try to do with that and it kind of works. Have you ever tried this uh, for yourself? I haven't tried it so far because so so far I was I was fine with what I was earning and uh, but uh, I mean uh, what I was also thinking of um, is also the client base that you approach has to be you know not the poor dog but the the stars the people that uh, actually have the money to pay you and uh, to be really specific there and really try okay not to take every deal that comes so it's that's why it's really important to have like a full full uh, sales pipelines are not so needy to accept every project yeah so what is the most time consuming thing you must do as a freelancer <laughs> i think research research is um for me and my services is, is the most time consuming thing because um helping freelancers across the world with a lot of skills you know especially in it there's a lot of time uh, going into researching new areas no expert new expertises you know from master data management to cloud services and you know to, to actually try to understand 
the client's industries and working working yourself into it so that's that's the most time consuming part because you can't autom automate it or stream like this process so yeah that that what i would say yeah do you do research based on clients needs or mainly just to understand niche in general so i i do it on clients needs so if, if i'm working with a client i, I just have a client who's in cloud uh, migration so i have to uh, be up to date about basically the the pain points also of his clients so you research the, the pain points of his clients you try to understand okay what is the person actually doing mm -hmm. so try to understand the service of the person that you're with um and also you know the industry in general the demands that are the trends um uh, so i do this really on an individual space but i'm a curious person so it's uh it's always fun you know it's also one of the great things i mean it's the most time consuming but also one of the most fun things what is your go-to approach uh for doing research do you have a checklist or how do you how do you do your research mm, i don't have a checklist actually what i'm mostly doing is you know try to find studies if i mean there's two ways actually and, uh, because the pain points of my clients are the most important things to me so i'm trying to find them out uh, either via studies. So um, that's what, what you can do as a, if, when you're starting out, actually, as a freelancer is always to look at studies because you're not going to have the experience that other people might have. So you don't have like the, let's say, the qualitative one-to-one -one, uh, research. So, but there's so many great studies out there that re already research what you need to know about your clients. So. Uh, that's like number one thing, always look at the data, always look at studies. And then the second thing is actually talking to your clients, mm -hmm. always talk to your clients, like what are the main challenges that they have. Mm -hmm. And um, the third thing is talking to other freelancers. Um, I mean, we're all a community, especially in IT, I mean, there's the, the de demand is there and there's less competition than, for example, in fields like marketing. But um, I mean, that's also I can, you know, tell you always work together with other freelancers because if they get a project request that not, might not fit to them, it might fit to your profile and to your personality. So yeah, the three things. So studies, uh, talking to your clients directly and talking to other freelancers and their experiences with the points you're researching. Got it. And what is the most nerve consuming thing you must do as a freelancer? <laughs> You're dealing with German bureaucracy, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> so, exactly. Yeah, that's, uh, that's something I'm also not very good at. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, writing writing offers, uh, because they're also like, you have your templates, but they're always really individual based on the client's needs. Um, yeah, doing the I mean, the bookkeeping is not like a real hard part, but it's like in general, I would say like all the administrative stuff. I'm not really uh, happy to to do it, but uh, and it also, you know, it also uh, decreases your hourly rate. <laughs> so that's what you yeah, have to calculate. Yeah, exactly. Do you delegate some administrative work to somebody? No, not. I mean, just um, the tax stuff. I do delegate. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, yeah, so far the other things I I'm good doing myself, you know, sitting on a park bench or something. <laughs> <laughs> and talking about writing offers, like you saw that you have your templates. Um, do you improve your offers somehow? Do you use any tools to write better offers or how, how it works for you? Mm, I mean, there's uh, the indiv individuality part, of course every time so improving the offer means for me uh, you know in my first uh, get to know call with the clients i just ask them okay what the act i'll try to find out okay can i help them and what can i help them with mm -hmm. am i even the right person and i mean based on this uh i try i try to i mean you can improve your offer uh, with wording try always to use the words that clients are using in your calls 
um, and um, you know, write down if they have specific wording because that that will appeal to them. Yeah. So there will, um, you know, there will be like, oh, he understood what I need. So uh, that's that's a way, you know, they will accept your offer a bit more more easily. And, you know, try to structure it nice. Try to, uh, yeah. Also, don't don't put uh, black black background and white uh, writing because a lot of people especially in Germany they print the offers out <laughs> they will hate you just for for putting back black back uh, background on, on the papers so <laughs> yeah do it make it easy so um, yeah so they don't get uh, black thumbs that's a great if I've never heard about <laughs> it but yeah I, I... I can imagine. <laughs> yeah, you can't. You can't believe how many people still print offers there because they they put them, you know, at the table of the decision maker. Yeah. So he has like all the offers next to each other, <laughs> and if your your offer is the black one, they probably won't even. You know, they won't even consider you because the the person who's printing this out, it's like, <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine, and. As a freelancer, do you ever feel professional loneliness? Oh yeah, actually, that's that's a big topic, and um, especially in winter, you know, when when there is not that much um, activities also in your social circle. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, the the thing is that I'm also you know I'm also working at a company, so I'm doing freelance also as a side business. Mm -hmm. So um, so I know both sides. And a lot of my friends actually they are they're self-employed and freelancers, and it's it's an issue for all of them because you don't have that uh, social security net that you have when you're at work, and you don't. I mean, even if you're not super friends with your coworkers, you will always have, even if you want it or not, you will have social contact, and you have this social muscle that you kind of have to train or actually don't have to train because you're doing it every day. Yeah. When you're a freelancer, it's really easy to get isolated because you don't have that, uh, yeah, everyday um, social interaction. I mean, you have interaction with your clients, but that's always something different. Also depends on what kind of clients you have, but um, yeah, I mean, um, that's actually, uh, it's a big thing. and. Uh, of recommendation for this maybe uh, you know talk to other freelancers find like-minded people go to meetups um, that really helps it also makes you feel less lonely because there's people out there who feel exactly the same that's really important to know and um, you know who have also the same values so kind of find your tribe um, yeah and I, I don't know like connect with people on LinkedIn, maybe this way, you know, maybe there's some cool freelancers in your area. Um, maybe you can start your own tribe, you know, if yeah, you don't know, other, just yeah. start your own community. <laughs> for sure, for sure. I mean, that's that's also a, it's a great tip. I mean, I've been, I, I, I've seen people do this on, on LinkedIn, you know, just starting groups, like even for, for digital nomads, you know, it's the same thing. You know, they, they feel lonely a lot because they're traveling a lot. Yeah. And a lot of, uh, mostly freelancers then <laughs> as well. And um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's a reason why they book into hostels and co-working spaces. Actually, also a great tip, co-working spaces works work as well. Um, yeah. If your friend, if your friend wanted to become a freelancer, what are top three things you'd advise them to consider before doing that? <laughs> That's a good question. Um, uh, think about your values first. You know, if you're really a person who uh, is um, worrying a lot and having a lot of doubts about security, then freelance might be not the best thing because you're going to have phases where it's really, really great. Uh, you have like no problems at all, you feel secure, but there's there's always, you know, if there's something changing in the markets, um, it, it can hit you, hit you quite rough. Yeah. And that it's always an up and down. So you kind of need to decide if you're that kind of person who is, you know, where, where you say, okay, it's worth it for me to have those harder ups and downs than in an employee's life. Um, yeah, and you know, 
try try to find about try to find out what kind of personality you are and if this really fits you and suits you and i mean freelance gets glorified a lot by a lot of people, especially on linkedin people are talking oh that's so cool you're so free <laughs> um for most actually it doesn't mean that you're more free as a freelancer than working for a company if you're working for a cool company and you know they let you work remotely they let you they pay you well you have cool people around you um you can take you know you can do workations and stuff mm -hmm. and you, you're feeling free then this might be better than a consultant who's working i don't know for really like uh for automotive industry or banking or someone who, who has actually to go there every time you know and yeah. uh, do presentations and they expect for him to to be there then you're less free so yeah but uh, try it out that's the thing i would advise try it out and if it doesn't work don't do it <laughs> if, you, if you find it, it works for you then then do it i mean um i think like the the jump in the cold water is always the hardest part yeah, it's like you know in sparta when they dropped children into the sea and if you survive them <laughs> <laughs> then everything yeah. is okay. <laughs> yeah, you got to be a survivor. Yeah, totally. And you know, Bjorn, I really wish to have the sky is the limit, but time is the limit. So the final question: If you were starting freelancing today, what is one thing you would have done differently? Differently, actually, well, that's a hard one because I actually I, I like the start because I'm. I didn't jump into the cold water directly, you know. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But I think that's something I would advise people uh, who want to try it out, do it next to their normal work. That's um, that, because that's something that I'm always hearing from my friends that they said, okay, what you're doing is actually pretty clever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not to hype myself or something, but they say, okay, we did it like this and it was really rough at the start, you know, going from having a state and paid job, uh, pay, like state, paid, paid steady, steady and paid job to, you know, basically uh, nothing or trying to build your client base first and build up and try to find out what it, you know, yeah. if it's something for you. That's actually that what I would advise. Otherwise, um, yeah, calculate your rates, like start, start higher. Actually, that's something I would also advise. So start higher. And then if you don't see like, okay, people are not paying this, then maybe drop it a little bit, but uh, yeah, your hourly rates, start them high. Got it. So Bjorn, thank you very much for sharing your challenges and for having such an open conversation. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Yuri. And thank you so much for listening. If you like the show, hit the like button on five stars and share it with your friends. That's it. We're done. See you in the next episode.